Our goal is to make a decade's worth of advances in five years instead of 10, and eventually end cancer as we know it. Over the last year, you took this staggeringly important role as leading the Biden Cancer Moonshot to help all of us, patients, physicians, researchers, really make a dent in this horrible disease. How did it come about? Biden's chief of staff is someone I worked with on a very complicated bit of legislation 20 years ago. And after not seeing him for eight years, I get an email that he wanted to talk to me. So I kind of thought something was up. And I got a call that uh, they wanted me to come see Vice President Biden. And I, I was in New York, and I said, well, I actually have a, an appointment tomorrow with my leukemia doctor. And uh, they said, okay, we'll make it later. And then when I hung up, I thought, what, am I crazy? So I called my doctor, and I said, I, I'm supposed to go see Biden about this cancer thing, uh, but I'm supposed to see you tomorrow for a checkup. He said, what, are you crazy? <laughs> go, go to Washington. You can see me anytime. So I went to Washington. I met with the vice president. First time I'd met him. And we hit it off and had another interview with Dr. Biden, his wife. And uh, he said, I want you to do this. And the reasons were, I knew science policy, used to be on the science committee staff. I knew cancer politics from my days at Faster Cures. And uh, I had worked in the White House before. It's kind of a unique environment. You don't have time to train someone. They didn't even know that I had had cancer. So that was a bonus, so to speak. So a while ago, you were diagnosed with CLL, chronic lymphocytic leukemia which was a disease that literally a decade ago we had a couple of chemotherapy drugs to treat, but now our arson is out here. Tell us a little bit about your experience. I had gone to my doctor for a physical. I'm getting off an airplane in San Francisco and I realized four days later, if I realize if I don't call him now he's going to be closed, it's the weekend. So I called him and while I'm getting my bag off the plane he says, your PSA is great, your cholesterol is great, but by the way you have leukemia. And I'm like, what does that mean and what do you mean by the way? I mean that is the way. So I happened to be visiting a doctor for dinner and I went to his office, got it tested again, I found out that it would be safe for me to fly home and uh, through the good graces of you, found a great doctor. Um, and a year later I started treatment. Over the past year you've been exposed to our field, you know, I feel, I say I as a physician side, a researcher side, you're exposed to not just your patient experience, but to thousands and tens of thousands across the country. So what are the big lessons? You know, what has the Biden Cancer Moon Force learned in this process? Well, number one, we get incoming, we're still getting incoming, even though we're going out of office in a few days, of people who want to share their experience, people who discovered cancer late in life, early in life, have had good experience, have had awful experience, who have six months to live. And they all, they all agree with what Vice President Biden has put at the front and center of this, a sense of urgency. We were saying, let's speed everything up. We waste a lot of time in between the things that take time. So let's speed it up. One way to speed it up is to share more data so you don't repeat things that have already been done and failed. And the other thing was people want to be involved. Patients want to learn more. They want to share their data. They want to have more conversations with their doctors. They want to meet other patients. So we have helped put them together. So a, a year ago here in Davos, you know, I sat with the vice president at a table. We talked about, I want to do this cancer moonshot. And he explained what moonshot meant. So what happened over the past year? What'd you get done? Well, we made a decision early on. There, there, were, there were two groups. There's the task force that I was asked to run for him. And there was a National Cancer Institute blue ribbon panel. They put together the scientific roadmap if we got new money. And we did get new money. We got $1.8 billion over seven years from this Congress. Um, but the task force, at the very beginning, we laid out a couple of things. Number one, we're, we're putting facts on the ground. We're not putting just recommendations together. So everything we did with the, with the agencies and with the private sector, you had to do it. It wasn't a plan. It wasn't a recommendation. You had to start it. You had to have goals. You had to have it funded independently of us. And I said, listen, throw away all the PowerPoints. I have two questions for you. Where do you touch patients in their journey from prevention through diagnosis, treatment, and survivorship? How can you do twice as much work in half the time? And second thing, look around this table with all these other agencies. Find someone you've never worked with before and partner with them. So as a result, NASA is working with the National Cancer Institute. The Department of Energy is working with the VA. The National Endowment for the Arts is working with the Cancer Institute. They were so excited to have some people new to play with and to have their mission framed in terms of human beings, not programs, that we got an enormous response from them. 
And that's going to continue because these are all programs that are underway, they're funded, they're mission related, and they're run by career people. We have a new administration coming into town and the Vice President Biden Cancer Moonshot Program, what's going to happen? What's the transition to the new entity? Well, the government programs will carry forward. The private programs will carry forward because these are commitments made by citizens and companies and foundations and universities and they send us updates all the time. I mean, they, people are committed to this. Um, the scientific program and the budget that we created will continue. The next administration will determine the second year funding. The first year funding is laid out. And then Vice President announced here at Davos that he is starting what right now is called the Biden Cancer Initiative. Uh, that will be a uh, nonprofit. I'm going to help him set this up and, and, uh, and run it. Uh, we have a, f a few of my moonshot team are coming with me to help. And it's all about continuing what he's passionate about data sharing, better data standards, helping people have access to clinical trials wherever they are, helping people get the best care wherever they are, helping understand how we can make drugs more affordable and accessible for everybody. These aren't going away. And Vice President Biden is a terrific convener because as you know, and anybody, it's very hard for people in the cancer community to lead other people in the cancer community. But because of his authenticity on this issue and passion, People are willing to do things for him they were not willing to do for their peers. 